Hello everyone, my name is Jakub Stokalski. I'm the project lead and lead designer of Frostpunk, and today I'm super excited to invite you to show you the newest addition to the world of Frostpunk, the Lost Autumn DLC. The Lost Autumn is a prequel scenario set in a time when everything looked different in the world of Frostpunk, when it was not as white as you might remember it from the base game. So this story is new, but it's not only the plot and the events that will be new in, when you play it. It's actually a completely revamped experience with everything from basic mechanics and gameplay to the way the game looks that's been changed and improved to give you a completely fresh and immersive Frostpunk experience. Since this is a prequel scenario, this is actually a moment in the history of this world when the frost didn't come just yet. It's uh, rumored, uh, some people maybe know it's coming, some people uh, kind of think about uh, that it's the only possible outcome of the, uh, of the event that are happening around the world, but no one's sure just yet. And some secret projects are in place to prepare for it should the worst comes to pass, and you are one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the, one of the people tasked with constructing another element that's missi missing from the, from the base game, the iconic tower of the generator here. You are actually in charge of building the generator to support the, uh, the, the evacuation uh, of the people of British Empire, should it really have to come to pass. Obviously, redesigning the game is, uh, was a huge process for us because, like I said, the new things that we've added and new things that we've changed, uh, the things that we've changed, touch pretty much every layer of the game, from the mechanics to the way to the fact that we are missing some of the most iconic elements of the uh, of the uh, of the Frostpunk gameplay, such as the generator or the temperature pressure. Uh, but also, one of the things that pops up the most is probably the way the game looks. And we didn't really, when we set out to tell this story, we wanted to tell, a, set a new addition to the, to the Frostpunk universe, but we didn't really want to shortchange ourselves. We were always looking to do what's right by the, by the story, by the content we want to add. So as soon as we decided uh, on, on, on redoing, doing a prequel story when the world is just not yet frozen over, well, redoing it in a green fashion was obviously immediately, immediately on the table, but we didn't want to do it just by slapping some generic green trees and grass on the, on the your usual layout. So researching environments such as Iceland or Greenland that uh, define the iconic, uh, the, this, this, uh, this combo of cold, but at the same time green greenery and, uh, and, and life in the environment was a huge undertaking for our, uh, for our um, our department and the whole team in general. Right, so this is the very beginning of the of the game. I don't want to really spend too much time here. It's, um, and so let me just jump ahead to show you some of the more advanced mechanics and gameplay elements that you'll find in the uh, in the scenario once you play it. As you can see, this is uh, the this is a day 24. So after three weeks of setting up uh, the camp and preparing resources, uh, I have my generator construction up and running. The generator here is still a work in progress. Obviously, it's not done, uh, but there's a lot of happening around it. You know, the, the camp and the and the construction site is fully up and running, uh, and there are new buildings and new resources that are brought in to to, um, to, uh, to make it all work. And obviously, like I mentioned, you know, new things do not only end on uh, on, on the looks. The actual whole resource tree and the economics of the game are, are redesigned as well. As you can see, there are no usual resources that a city built uh, in the snow would use, such as the deep uh, coal deposits on, on the iron ores. They are, you know, all, they are not really exploited by my, uh, by my construction workers here. Uh, on the other hand, what I do here is I bring most of my resources uh, by sea. Uh, so the docks here provide me with, uh, with new, uh, new things, to, uh, new resources that I can use to, to produce some of the more advanced parts that I need to construct the generator. And obviously this is a balancing act for me. This is a balancing act for me because I cannot bring everything at once. I have to choose, do I want steel? Do I want steel? Do I want wood? Do I want coal? Because the slots that I can use to, to build the docks on this ragged shore here are really limited. So I'll have to make sure that these are, you know, the, I, can, I save some for actually 
fishing and providing food for my workers. Um, uh, and this balancing act is one of the biggest elements that will test my approach as my skill uh, as a uh, as a strategist, as a as a person who can actually get this this uh, this uh, hugely demanding job of setting up uh, a lifeboat for humanity, the generator. Uh, whether I whether I can I be successful with this or not, and obviously. Economics and resources is one thing, but another big thing is the is the is the way I shape the way workers uh, and construction site workers uh, fare on my uh, on my construction site. And rest assured, some of the laws uh, from the base game will make a comeback. But there is a lot of new ways that you'll be able to shape the uh, shape the society of your of, of your of your of your camp in very different ways. You can end up uh, in doing, you know, in, in good faith of trying to finish the generator on time. Uh, this can lead to some really, you know, different um, and unforeseen consequences. One of them, uh, one of these new elements, obviously, will, will relate to the to the workers, of, uh, such as the strikes here. Uh, and one of my my main effort of constructing the core of the generator is currently on strike. My guys are not happy about the working conditions. Uh, the safety being quite harmful, uh, as I can see, so they will probably have some demands of me uh, for them to actually resume work. So let's negotiate. Yeah, so yeah, they are obviously on strike. They are angry about exploitation, terrible working condition, deadly dangers, which is basically the description of Frostpunk, right? But still, they're not happy about it. And I'll need to do something to uh, to make them go back to work. So I could promise them better, better food. Uh, I could pro promise them a bathhouse which will improve the comfort of their uh, of their life in the on the construction side or i could try to appease them with a little well not let's not call it a bribe but maybe a bribe bribe um let's see if they accept well they reject my offer uh those needy sobs uh let's see scraps for your lap dogs you fat block sucker uh, they really they really like me obviously um bathhouse or hearty meals or a full day off well full day off is something that i cannot really uh, afford being on the clock here so let's just uh, say that i'll i'll build them a bathhouse that's fine so i'll need a i'll need to go to the book of laws i'll need to pass the law to actually allow them some time to get cleaned up after work uh, so let's just set it up whether we actually use it later or not is a completely other matter, but they don't need to know about this just yet. Let me just... I'll probably need to redesign some of my camp around here, but for now, let's just place it here. Well, okay, so strikes and, and discontent of the workers is not the only thing that will stalk me here. Uh, the consequences of my choices in the Book of Laws and the way I shape uh, the, the laws in the, on the, in the camp will haunt me as well. Uh, this event here radical activists probably mean that i i favored one group of the of my workforce more than the other and this leads obviously to some consequences so i could condemn all violence uh, stemming from the divide between between working classes i could say that they had it coming and get a get a motivation boost from my one part of the workforce that is more indoctrinated by by my manipulations here obviously playing the machiavelli here um so let's just do this i obviously need some motivation i need to keep up the motivation of my people up uh, otherwise their efficiency will fall and my 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 whole goal of setting up this generator in time uh, will will be uh, will be impossible to achieve right the bathhouse is ready uh, so hopefully they'll get off my back for some time at least um, and let them rest for the for the evening so actually, the changes to the mechanics are, are pretty deep. Uh, uh, using the night here, I can show you the, uh, the overlay for one of the biggest elements uh, new in the game, which is the safety system. Uh, obviously, doing such, such a hu huge task, such as building the generator, is a no small feat, but it's also very dangerous. Uh, so I'll have different workplaces, which are affected by, by different uh, elements of, uh, of my approach to building and, and, the, and the conditions on the construction side. I'll have to make sure that I actually keep up, either keep up safety to not make all of my workforce ill at the same time, 
or I, or I find other ways to deal with the consequences of asking my, my guys to work in, in human conditions here. I'll probably need to make up some time, so let's just let me say send some other guys here, and I probably need some more ex heat exchangers and the structural profiles for the next uh, phase of building the generator. And obviously, some of my guys will come up with ideas since I uh, obviously favor workers in this playthrough. Uh, some of them will have ideas of how to improve the constructions. Well, will I will I trust them with this delicate work? Uh, well, this could lead to some unintended consequences. I think I'll pass for now. So, yeah, I need some of my resources up and running here. It's, uh... Obviously, Frostpunk is a game about meeting impossible challenges and, and persisting in the face of them. Uh, but at the same time, this is not uh, uh, and, and redesigning so many elements for the uh, uh, for the gameplay and the looks and the feel and the whole story of the of the scenario uh, made us introduce a lot of new elements. But also, Frostpunk is primarily uh, a story about what humanity does when faced with this catastrophe of of, of impending cold. And while it's in a lot of the time here, you'll be facing different challenges and juggling different, uh, different, um, uh, uh, different objectives. The frost itself and the cold, uh, you can ex fully expect for it to play a role here as well. So, at some time, it could things could happen that will that will th throw you off guard, and your old uh, enemy uh, could come a knocking. Uh, which can totally and drastically change your situation and the outlook of your people and the way you have to approach the uh, the problems and the challenges before you to be able to uh, to meet the coming uh, meet the coming deadlines so thank you for watching and i hope you've liked what you saw as much as we've enjoyed making it we are super anxious to see what you think about the game uh, when it comes out on the january the 21st see you in the world of frostpunk